Step one of any car project is the proper PPE. Now, as you can see here, I've got the size 13 um, sandals on, shorts, short sleeve. <sighs> Not really prepared for this, but what we're gonna do, you always gotta save some cardboard. Cardboard is key. I could use this mat, that'd be really comfy, but I would get yelled at by my wife. So, don't use the yoga mat. Go for the cardboard. Next time you get a TV, save that. This is perfect. Ow! See, right away, already injured my toe by not wearing shoes. So, you gotta go for the TV cardboard. Otherwise, you're gonna spill stuff all over your floor, which I'm probably gonna do. Where's my jack handle, AKA the breaker bar? Here we go. Hey, uh, here's another tip, guys. When you are installing O2 sensors, you don't need to install them to 8,000 foot pounds, okay? I literally had to use mat gas to undo this one because some knucklehead decided he wanted to hang on the wrench. Jesus, come on guys. All right, there we go. Okay, let's get this jack out from under here because who needs an extra layer of safety? Oh God, get in the hole. Diving right back into it here. Okay, so uh, we are gonna start off, we're not just doing a regular old oil change today. We're actually gonna be installing this trick piece from Passport. Uh, this is a sandwich plate and it has um, four separate eighth NPT tapped holes that allow you to add accessories. So um, what happens is you remove your old filter and you undo the nut that's installed in there and basically this will replace that and get, you know, torqued down into place. So uh, this allows you to add, like I said, additional gauges. Um, so if you wanted, let's say, oil temp, oil pressure, perfect spot. Um, you could also use it to drain oil if you wanted, just to hold a bunch of different options. But we are gonna go through that installation today. Also, another thing we are gonna look at, let's see if I have the parts out here, I do. We are going to look at installing replacement seals for the factory oil cooler. I got these offline. Um, these folks right here uh, provided me everything. I believe I got them off of eBay. They're a smaller business, um, but they provide really good instructions. So um, it was really nice to see that they had diagrams and instructions. So we are gonna try and follow this, install that, and we'll, we'll see how far we get. Um, one other thing you may have noticed here is that I'm not using Motorcraft oil. And I might get some flack in the comments for this, but I found an article uh, that was posted a few years back by a mechanical engineer like myself. I will say that this guy rambles quite a bit. I wanna lead with that. However, he did test over 230 different oils, both synthetic, non-synthetic, high ZDDP, you know, oil additives, everything. And what he found was, believe it or not, and you can get this from Walmart. In fact, that's one of the only places you can get it from easily, that the Quaker State Ultimate Durability Full Synthetic ranked highest in terms of his wear test. Now you can read all about this online. Like I said, it is a rambling long article, but um, what I thought was cool was not only did the Quaker State Full Synthetic consistently rank well, at elevated temperatures, it broke down less than other oils, making this an excellent oil for when you wanna go on the track. So um, I think it's a win, I'm gonna try it out. You can pick this up, I believe this was $18, I think this was six. So you don't need seven, I just got an extra just in case. Um, but basically for 24 bucks plus a $4 filter, this is the FL820S, I'm gonna install um, you can change your oil for under 30 bucks with full synthetic that's rated really well. So we're gonna give it a shot. Um, I had also purchased this other filter that I was gonna use instead, uh, this Wix. I'm sure this is a great filter. Um, I really normally like Wix stuff, but I did read a few things about the location of the drain valve inside the uh, oil filter. And a lot of folks agree that the Motorcraft is the best. So you know what? 
while I was there, I saw this for no joke. It was like on sale for like $3.98. So you really can't beat that, pick that up. Um, if you don't want to use Quaker State, uh, Mobile One was rated well on that website. And also um, Amsoil Signature Series. Not their, not their Dominator Racing Oil, but their Signature Series was rated really well. So uh, let's go ahead. So I pulled the old filter off, which is this guy. Now, at first glance, you may not notice a big difference, but when I flip the camera up this way, you can clearly see, here's the correct Ford Motorcraft filter, here's the equivalent Wix, and then here's the tiny little Pennzoil Performax. So, um, you know, it's weird. There's an extra ring, like here's the ceiling surface, this one obviously tucks in much closer. I don't know. I just glancing at these, I don't know if that would cause this to leak. I, I was seeing a little bit of an oil leak, um, but just in terms of how much it can filter, it's so much smaller. I mean, the diameter here, right? I hold like that, come over here. It's hugely, hugely different. If I hold it over top, it's not gonna be easy to see, but it's way smaller. So um, I wouldn't recommend getting that filter. I would recommend either the FL820S or this Wix um, 51372XP. So I'm, I'm trying to decide what I wanna do. Um, the oil leak that I saw previously was, I was seeing drips right here. Now, I don't know whether or not it was the wrong size filter because the filter seals on this inner ring and then just rides up alongside, you know, in here, but that's not really a sealing surface, I wouldn't say. This is, um, I have all the parts to replace the gaskets in here, but part of me is wondering if that's gonna be more of a can of worms than it's worth. I'm, I'm not sure, I, I really haven't made the decision yet. I'm gonna try and clean out some of this crud, crud and then kind of reassess um, the other thing, if you put these on too tight, what can happen is when you put your oil filter on too tight and you could break it loose, you can actually loosen this and allow some oil to come out where it shouldn't. So I will check the torque of that. Um, and we'll see. So, uh, I'm also, it's hard to see. I'm going to get up in there and torque the header bolts one last time, 14 to 16 foot pounds, just to make sure that they are, you know, where they need to be. So while you're underneath here, um, you will have to drain the coolant. There's the petcock. I just ran a hose into a separate drain pan. Um, slightly unrelated to this, but I will be adding, this is the coolant hose that runs up to the coolant crossover. I'm gonna be cutting in here somewhere um, and adding the piece to get my coolant temp sensor. That way I know this is always full of coolant and it's basically, you know, the temperature running the coolant crossover, which is what I've been shooting with my IR gun. I think that's a pretty good spot to uh, to check it. Because I've got the seal kit and I need to drain the coolant anyway to install the uh, pickup for my coolant temp sensor or my coolant gauge inside the car, might as well go ahead and do it. Um, I gotta run out and grab a half inch hex for this guy because my set only goes up to three eighths. Half inch is pretty big. And I'm gonna try and get myself a new crush washer uh, for the oil drain plan because it looks like it was leaking a little bit there. That's a 14 millimeter. So um, go ahead and grab those two things and be back. Let this drain while I'm gone. This might be a dumb tip, but you know, I'll pass it along. Uh, one thing I like to do is put tape on stuff to remind me things. So I put tape over this because I opened up the uh, coolant fill and also the radiator. That'll just remind me so I don't go ahead and start it and forget to put those caps on. Uh, that's just something I like to do. For these, 
so it wouldn't create a vacuum, um, I just took a razor blade and put a little slit in each of these. That way, both the caps are off, but it can still breathe. Sometimes when you have your cap on and you're trying to drain, it creates a vacuum and it's, you know, takes longer to drain. So I uh, just did that, but that way stuff won't fall in there, which is a good idea. So when you get your Pro Sport gauges, it comes with instructions, which is, you know, what you would expect. They obviously all come with the sensor. Um, I'm going to install the sensor in this piece right here. And this attaches into your coolant line. Um, you could do it in the engine block and get rid of this, but, you know, I wanted to try this out. Um, if I can get it out of here. So, yeah, it's got a little plug in it. You thread it in here, and then this is your ground. Um, you do want to run a ground in addition to the wiring to uh, a chassis ground or somewhere on the car because just because this is hooked to rubber, you won't get a good ground. So uh, pretty cool. If you're looking for a good ground location, I plan to mount my sensor housing right here. That'll keep it kind of out of the way of everything. Um, I can monitor it for leaks. Also, this right here is a good solid ground. I checked it with my multimeter and I basically from the threads inside this hole back to the negative side of the battery, I have the same resistance as if I went directly to the engine block. So um, perfect, I can just run a really short little line from here to here. It'll look clean, keep it out of the way. So if you're like me, you're gonna have to run to the store. I uh, I didn't have, I, I've got, you know, obviously Allen sockets, but I don't have any that go up to half inch. Normally I've seen they stop at like three eighths. So I know this is like a cheapo deal, but you know, 12 bucks, you get a half, nine sixteenths and five eighths. I'll probably only use this one, so I'm okay with going a little cheaper. Um, I noticed that I had a little bit of a leak. I don't know how old of a um, washer this is on here. So you can get a replacement washer, but for like a couple bucks, you can also get a new drain plug that has a built-in washer. And I kind of recall from the newer Mustangs, like I had a 2013, they use this style and they don't use the washer. Um, so I'm gonna try this and just see if it leaks still or not. But if it does, um, you can get, you know, replacement washers. The one that was on there had a little gasket on the inside, so that might get worn out. This one doesn't, but in case you're wondering, they are an M14, so we'll give it a shot. So if you've never taken a bath in coolant before, this will be the project where that happens. Yeah, I had to do a little outfit change in between filming here because I just got absolutely covered. Basically, um, to get this piece off right here, so this is your oil cooler. Um, on one side, you got engine oil. On the other side, you've got coolant. Um, obviously, you got to drain both in order to remove this. Even when you remove the lower radiator hoses of the thermostat and you let them drain, you will think that you got everything out of here. I'm here to tell you, you, you won't. So um, there, there's not an easy way to do this. You're gonna spill a lot of coolant on yourself. So uh, safety glasses may have been a good idea. Shirts you don't care about, also probably a good idea. Uh, no small animals around, probably a good idea. Um, I, I hit most of those. I'll let you figure out which ones I missed, but um, it's not that hard to take it all out, but it is, you know, you've got the bolt that runs to the center over here. That's a half inch hex. Um, the rest is just getting in here to get um, these hoses loosened up to pull this thing out. But yeah, you're gonna spill stuff all over yourself. Okay, don't look at that for a second. When you get this piece out of the car, okay, the next part's a little tricky. This is the actual oil cooler, the heat exchanger itself. Now, in order to get this out of here, you're gonna to need to get ideally brass. I used steel, mine was already mushroomed. I didn't do that when I was doing this. It was already flat and smooth, I checked it. You basically go around in like a star pattern and lightly use a hammer, you tap this out. Now you don't wanna use a screwdriver because you'll puncture this, it's aluminum, and then you'll get a leak. So you can see where I kinda of had to mar the surface a little bit there, but I was pretty gentle. But here's the alarming thing, look at that. I don't know what that is. There's a big chunk and then also another giant chunk in here. So I'm going to have to clean that all out. That's really weird to me. Um, don't know what that is. Don't know where that came from, but certainly is not good to be circulating through. So we are going to get that all cleaned up. But that is how you get the oil cooler out of the housing. Be really careful with this. I'm gonna take a hose 
and try and rinse this off. Try and do my best to cover up where the oil would go. Man, this is weird. So here's the actual oil cooler. I've already started replacing the O-rings. So they come in different bags and um, they come with the instructions. And the tip is, if it's in the same bag, it's the same O-ring. So this is O-ring B. Um, there's two of these. All the other ones are different. The outside here is larger than the inside. They say to put some silicone grease on it before you slide it back in there. Um, I just blew it out with some compressed air. Here's the gunk that I found on the inside. It's like little pieces of, I don't even know, gasket or something. So got that out of there. So for, for nothing else, it should be a little cleaner now, but I wish I knew where that came from. Okay, so let me show you some progress here. So we've got this guy in. Now I, I measured these and I bought this as a 32 millimeter. Um, I'm wondering if I should have bought bigger. I'm hoping that it does, doesn't leak, but you know, we'll see. Um, so I've got this just zip tied out of the way down there. I've got my ground over here, um, run nice and close. And uh, I checked to make sure that was good. So that will be my coolant temp sensor. And then if we come underneath the car, so I've got my oil cooler. Um, geez. Uh, we got my oil cooler on here and it is all in place, all nice and clean. Sandwich plate is gonna go on here and then I'll have my two taps for my sensors. And I'll show you that on the workbench here. So here's your sandwich plate right here. Oil pressure temp those two will go in here and i'll block off the other two back underneath the car now uh, you can see that i've got the sandwich plate installed um, i've got that first one's the oil uh, pressure and then the oil temperature next to it again i just put some some electrical tape over there to keep any debris out i don't know when i'll be getting the gauges installed i might try and work on it today uh, the other two ports i have plugged and the filter just barely fits. So with the right size filter on there, it just barely fits. Um, I did go back and recheck and it's not leaking or anything. I think that was just oil being squeezed out. Uh, you lose a lot of oil when you, when you change the filters or worse, when you go and uh, you know pull the whole oil cooler out, you're gonna spill coolant oil everywhere. So I will have to go underneath here and clean all the stuff off, but um, yeah, so. Just about done underneath the car. I'm gonna start on the inside. That'll probably be another video. Yeah, I hope you guys found that, uh, that video informative. Um, I've actually got a lot of work done since I filmed that video. I'll show you guys a sneak peek real quick of the gauges that I installed. I think they turned out um, great. So I'll have a separate video on how to run the gauges, how to install a head unit, how to tie everything together and tidy up all the wiring. Um, I think I came up with a pretty cool way if you're gonna put an aftermarket head unit in your car anyway, uh, how to put the gauges in to make it look really nice. So uh, stay tuned and check that out. Like always, if you enjoy the video, please, it helps me a ton if you both like and subscribe. So please click the subscribe button, um, click the bell. You'll also get updates when I upload stuff. I've been trying to upload more and more and I've actually made a ton of good progress on the car. So um, pretty much all that's left, if you've been keeping track of this is um, the actual like nitty gritty track related stuff. Uh, today I got the AC working. So I've got AC now, that's huge. Um, just needed to be recharged. I replaced the low pressure switch. Um, hopefully it doesn't leak, we'll see. But um, you know, all the ignition upgrades are done. The oil's been changed. Uh, pretty much all the basic stuff's done. I think I addressed some of the ticking noises. Uh, there was a idler pulley that went bad. Um, you know, little things here and there. I also got it through inspection, which is really cool. Um, I got it through inspection. Unfortunately, I swapped out the exhaust and in doing so, it is so quiet. So I may actually even consider taking those pipes, violator mufflers off and trying like a straight pipe or something. Because now that I added the catted X pipe, it's just so quiet, um, which is kind of a bummer, but you know, I needed to do it to pass inspection. So um, I'll get this thing on the road. I, I, because of COVID, I can't take the car uh, just to the DMV and get registration and all that stuff. Um, I have to set an appointment and the earliest appointment was next week after work. So 
Um, I'm going next week to get it tagged and then I can really get this thing on the road and start doing some like driving impression videos and stuff like that. So more to come. But like I said, I really appreciate you guys kind of staying tuned for this stuff and then hopefully we can get this thing on the track soon um, or at least up driving. So like I said, thanks for watching. Please don't forget to like and subscribe. I read all your comments. So keep them coming. Have a good night.